Hello, everyone. Welcome. It has been a while. Oh, Brent made it. We weren't sure if you were going to make it here, but you uh, you obviously made it into the stream. Hello. So about that. Happy New Year, everybody. Hi, Vita. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Rebecca. Um, it's been, it seems like it's been a very long time since we've done Probably November. Uh, yeah, I think we did do one in November with uh, Holiday in the Park, right? Yeah, yeah, I would think so. I would think so. Actually, you know what? I don't know if we did. Or we, oh, yeah, we did in November. We didn't recap. We did not recap. We kind of previewed, I think. I think yeah. it was a preview. Since there was some other big event happening, coming up. There was. There was a lot that went on between last time and uh, now. I mean, what has happened? I've Laura and I got married. Uh, wow, we, you did? We did. Yes. Yes, we I did. And we're still married. <laughs> um, what have you been up to? I know. Brent, you went to Disney. <laughs> yes, I did in the middle of January. I don't know if you guys can hear me well, but yeah, we had a great time. It's a good thing to hold over between Six Flags visits. Jamie, Kim, Dr. Six, Sarah, what have you guys been up to? We all went to the Wisconsin Dells for New Year's. Did that? I went to Gurney last weekend. Woohoo. <laughs> um, I have been just very, very, very busy. So we don't really have a format for today's show. So hi, Sydney. Um, so it's really, we're going to talk about anything that you guys want to talk about as long as we actually have the answer. I can tell you right now before somebody asks, no, we do not know when opening day <laughs> is going to be. So I'm just throwing that out there right now. We do not know that answer. I think yet. we'll have to say that like every five minutes for and new I, people that join in. And I think if somebody says a rumor... We can definitely confirm that it's a rumor. Right. Exactly. Oh, and by the way, if you do want to interact with us during the stream, you have questions for us, go ahead and give Facebook permission to access StreamYard or StreamYard access to uh, Facebook. That way you don't pop up as just a Facebook user. We actually know who we're interacting with. So just point to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. It's going to say, do you give it permission? Just say yes, and you'll be able to interact with us throughout the entire show. And we're only going to answer questions for people whose names actually show up, right? That is correct. That is correct. So if you come across this Facebook user and you're asking us a question, eh, we're unfortunately not going to answer that uh, question. So why don't we start here? And this was actually a question from... Faith, she was actually the first one that responded um, regarding season passes, memberships, what's going on this year. And I actually have, I'm going to add to the stream here, just a little bit of a PowerPoint, um, not mean to take anybody here to school, but I've worked with PowerPoints all day. So it's just natural to throw this all into a, to a PowerPoint. So we're going to talk about what we know as of now, I and mean, for our park, nothing has changed. We have seen with parks who 
our 365 parks and parks that have had announcements in terms of their opening that there are some definite changes coming. So what do we have currently still available to us in terms of the season pass? There is the basic season pass. And then with the memberships, there's gold plus, platinum, diamond, diamond elite. Now what's changed with the memberships a bit is you can either pay monthly on it while that option is still there, or you can buy it outright. So as I go through here, we kind of, I know the slide's kind of small. Let me see if I can make it a little bit larger, take ourselves out of that stream. But this kind of highlights the benefits of the season pass versus the various levels of membership. And this is directly from the Six Flags website. This is not something that I created. This is strictly straight off the website as of probably about 10 o'clock this morning. So if anything has changed between now and then, I apologize for not capturing that. So let's talk through the various options on here. So for the basic season pass, um, it's $59.99. If you want to include parking, you can add it on for additional $10. Bucks. Um, get you into Six Flags Great America, Hurricane Harbor Rockford, and Hurricane Harbor Chicago. It's good for the whole 2022 season. Um, and as of now, it's saying admission to Fright Fest um, at Six Flags Great America. So feel free to, if anybody wants to chime in with anything that's on here. Um, I mean, we really haven't seen, the changes seem to be happening in parks separately. So this could, I mean, we, we've we seen changes happen around like a month before opening day for some of them. Um, but we, we don't see a whole lot of scary changes yet on our website so again we, we we definitely advocate people to lock into what they feel comfortable with now while there are options right because once if i should say i'm going to say if because mm -hmm. we don't know right now obviously we only know what's available to us but if we get the same changes the other parks have received these options are going to go away in terms of the membership options that we have. So they disappear pretty quickly. Um, from what we've noticed, is the tiered memberships may show as sold out for like the day before, and like around eleven o'clock that the next night or that night, all of a sudden, poof, they're gone. So. <laughs> So it's one of those things, if you are thinking of either a 2022 season pass or membership in the current state, I would probably make that purchase, that decision sooner than later. And if you're, I mean, very few parks are left in the chain where there is the monthly option. Um, very, very few. Ours is one. St. Louis is another so far. Um and it's such a changing situation by the time we log off, that you, you never know. Um, so if you want to lock in, you can lock in whatever price you're locked in at. You, you can lock in for 12 months. Um, but I do know a lot of our group members have been wanting to be able to pay in full for memberships. So that might be an option if you want to lock into that. You do lose any kind of upgrade that you have currently. And we'll go through here. Let's just look at some of the uh, membership options out there. And not only on here do we have the monthly costs on there, but you can see if you would like to pay in full. So if you are thinking about that season pass, that basic pass, I mean, for a few bucks more, you can get the Gold Plus, which is also going to get you mission to all of these Six Flags parks. I mean, really, if you're already going if you're already buying the season pass and then you're paying the $10 extra for parking for $10 more, you get all the other parks. Um, it, it seems like a no brainer to me. I know we had a lot of members who upgraded. So this is gold plus platinum, obviously a little bit more. You are getting additional perks. Once you hit that platinum level of membership, 
that member drink bottle is included. So you're no longer having to worry about purchasing that drink bottle year after year. Um, and I think, said, don't the season drink bottles, so the, again, now we're doing a difference of $20, but the season drink bottle is more than that if you were to just purchase that in the park. So that's something to consider as well. And again, you always want to, you know, it's what's best for you. I mean, you don't feel that you need a more expensive membership if you're not, you know, if those benefits aren't enticing enough to you or something that you know that you would not, you know, if you really don't care about skipping lines or getting discounts on merch or food, then yeah, obviously the cheaper membership is probably the route to go. So Diamond, we're coming in at eleven ninety nine a month, or and now we're starting to see a decent price jump here up one hundred forty four dollars and ninety nine cents. If you want to purchase it in full, and then Diamond Elite. $18 a month or $219.99 if you want to buy it outright. So this is what the current structure is right now. Okay, so this is what our park has to offer. Um, but let's take a look at the dining real quick too. So these are the current dining options available for season dining. You can buy one meal um, season dining or the two meal season dining. And then from membership, you've got your basic, you have your deluxe and that the premier, I think that is only available to the gold memberships because that's the one that includes the drink bottle. Cause at the gold level, I don't, you're not getting that member drink. Correct. Drink up. Correct. For member. Yeah. The, that premium isn't really available for um, higher tiers, but all of the member dining is good at all the other parks. Um, I can't, I haven't looked recently to see what the verbiage is on the season dining as far as if it's good at other parks or not. All right, and let's see here. All right, so what are possible changes we might see coming our way. And this is kind of why why we're saying, you know, get in now on the memberships if that's something you really want because you will be considered a legacy member going forward as long as you keep your membership in good standing. And this is actually from um, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, in terms of what they're offering. They've done away with the memberships and there are three different variations of season pass. There's a thrill seeker pass an extreme pass and the ultimate pass. You see, there's some different perks available to you depending on which level that you uh, go with. And that thrill seeker pass does have blackout dates. Now I'm not sure what their blackout dates are. They are different for park. Um, but I mean, magic mountain, they're pretty, they're pretty much like every, every day and every weekend in October. <laughs> um, they, they're definitely busy days and popular days are blocked out. But they do vary by park and even some of the benefits towards the bottom of the list we're noticing vary by park. Now, one thing that I know has changed since this grid was created, um, they need to update it. It's showing that with their dining plans that there's a one day dining and a 10 meal dining plan. Well, it appears, um, I'll get to it here in a second, but it appears that has changed and it's changed to a four meal dining plan. But this is the Fiesta Texas pricing in terms of these. But is a 10 prices. meal still, I'm wondering if they're not selling the 10 meal, but it's still loaded onto cards of those getting the ultimate pass. Could be. Um, I I went out there and tried to make a purchase on it, and I was only getting the four, um, the four meal. Oh, meal. so the ultimate yes. pass only had the four with it. Yep. Because I don't think you have to set, buy it separately. I think it just loads under your pass. But are you saying? I'll have. I haven't tried. I didn't try that. I was looking okay. at just the add on the the season add ons. Okay. So yeah, we can I, see if I think if you get the ultimate from 
what I, my understanding is that your pass will, like the dining will just be loaded on kind of like a virtual punch card, like we got at food festivals. It'll just, you can use your meals as many, you know, in one visit or in 10 visits, but once they're gone, they're gone. And then you have to keep reloading. So you can see the thrill pass is about the same as, you know, the, the basic season pass that's out there, but the extreme pass, the ultimate, they do allow you to make four flexible payments. If, you know, you don't want to pay that all up front. I mean, $300 for a pass all up front for a family of four, that could get costly. And then this is, you know, the only dining plan option that I've seen pop up on there. Um, so if that 10 meal dining is automatically being included with the that ultimate pass, that might be different. But if you're looking to add on, this is the only add on option aside from a one day dining. Right. And it looks that like that is a major is, change. Yeah, it looks like everything is greatly simplified now uh, as opposed to years past. But my pro tip from years past was always build up your pass exactly how you would purchase it with the quantities, with the add ons, get all the way to the shopping cart and see the final price. Just because, at least, especially in the past, with all of the options, you'd be surprised how often a higher pass would discount things to a point where it was almost the same price as the lower pass. Well, in fact, we've run the numbers and if you're adding everything, you know, you're adding flash pass and dining, your cheapest bet is diamond elite currently. And I think we had someone else run the numbers and he was like, Oh, shuck. They're, they're all this, they're all about the same. And they're all within a couple dollars with, of each other if you're adding everything but Brent is exactly right don't assume because currently if you lock in you get 50% off of your add-ons if you're a diamond elite um, that makes a huge difference that will not be the case in these new tiered passes right and this is again we can't emphasize enough if you are on the fence now is the time to make those purchases with i'm um, just hot back a few slides here with, with the overall benefits in terms of what is currently being offered and then what those possible changes so i know be. we have some people who are holding out for oh is there a spring sale is there is no no <laughs> we do not I anticipate else, I, when for once for once i think in the history of six flags when they offered those season pass offers they really were the lowest the lowest they were going to be offered so any i'm just going to kind of pause here saying if there's any questions going across the street burger king i think you'll see if they'll change the sake of fact i think you will see a lot of people going to burger king you'll see a lot of people going back to old school um having lunch and meals out in the Parking lot. parties, yeah. Or scheduling around meals. You may see more families coming after dinner who are local. That used to be kind of the norm. Everyone would come in at like 6 30, 7 um, and enjoy the last couple hours. Whereas now people come in at like 5 36 and, and eat. So I mean, I I don't get the feeling they they want us to uh, use the meal pass as much as some of us have. And that's definitely like, we, we, we all know that if there are too many people doing it. You got to make some changes. Little birdie told me that if you bring a large enough inverter, you can run a microwave and cook up some meals in your car. Not that I would ever do something so inane. <laughs> So any questions on season passes, memberships, why we're here? Um, Faith, obviously, this is you're on here with us. I know that this was your question. I don't know if you have any uh, follow up, but go ahead and add that into the. Uh, oh, somebody asked, comments. can you add dining pass to membership if you paid the membership in full? So this is. So for monthly memberships, you can only get the discount when you purchase 
when you initially purchase. Otherwise, if you want to add Dine, you essentially have to start a new membership. But for paying in full, that's a really interesting question. Is, is, is James on tonight? James is not here no, with he's us. Not. Oh. Unless he's, I, I know he was, he was going to try to listen in. Um, okay. James, oh, if that's you are right. open, feel other... free to chime in via chat. So now I know Jim during Holiday in the Park, Jim, if it was Holiday in the Park or if it was the end of Fright Fest, he went in and bought the that gold season pass that they were offering. And he did the dining in full right then and there that day. And that was added to his pass. And they even gave him a red membership cup. So, Yeah, I know you can get the discount. So my answer to that question is that would, that there's going to be no way to do that online. And if you're wishing to do that, you really are going to need to reach out to the park about your specific situation. Yeah, I mean, but if, you buy, if you went online right now and just bought the meal plan, you should be okay to add that to your pass, right? If you go online right now and you want to just do the meal plan and you don't want any discount on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because once you buy it, even if anything changes, you're just going to take it to the park, and, or it'll just add to your to your pass. Yeah, you can do that. I think that's the only thing you would. So yeah, please don't contact the park if you're just in, interested in buying a, a meal plan. But if you are someone who paid in full for a membership and are looking for a reduced cost of the meal plan, I don't know exactly how that works and that you may need to contact the park. Hold on. She hasn't eaten. And then with Rebecca's question here, if they get rid of memberships, can we upgrade to the next level of membership? You'd have to do it before they get rid of the membership. Yeah. I mean, for obvious reasons, they don't do a countdown and tell you that the memberships are going to disappear from your park. They just disappear one day. And once you are locked in to whatever level that you are. I mean, I guess some people, it's not really a locked into the level you are because remember, if you're on an upgrade that's not Diamond Elite VIP or a free gold plus upgrade, those were the permanent ones. So if you got upgraded to platinum or to diamond or to Diamond Elite, that's going to go away after next year. And you, there will not year, be a right? way to upgrade at this point. What was that, Jamie? After this year or after 2023? I thought it was, it's through 2022. Okay. So that it's a it's deceiving to some people. So if like you're sitting in a platinum membership, but you're paying for gold plus because you're enjoying a free upgrade, if you want to lock in. You was you really? I don't know what that would look like because you would need to you might have to upgrade to the platinum first and then the diamond if you were looking to get diamond or then the diamond elite. And once an upgrading starts a new 12 month commitment, which could be a good thing. It could be because that that'll lock you in to that rate for at least 12 months. You wouldn't see a price increase. Oh, that's a good question. They can. We have seen, um, we did see documentation at Six Flags in Mexico. Now, I'm not very good with my, I, I don't know how to, the peso exchange. So I don't know what that actually looked like. But um, members at Six Flags in Mexico did receive an email a few months back saying that they were going to see changes to their membership on January 24th. I can't confirm what the changes were, but they said something about the, the discounts that would be available and their membership price. So yes, they, when you're locked in in your first 12 months, your rate won't change. But after that, I think they only have to give us like a 30 day notice to give us a chance to cancel if we don't accept the new terms. Um, but they can raise those rates. They just have to give us notice. And I'm not opposed to that at all. It's mm -hmm. been four years at the same rate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, 
I think we all are just trying to understand where it's fascinating to watch things change. And we all knew that we all knew that, that things can change. There's a lot of just the whole environment has changed. Um, and so, I mean, there's no, like, you, you gotta know, I think you gotta know what's right for your family, what's right for your situation. And no one should feel compelled to pay more than they feel comfortable paying. And, um, you know, just, we, we don't shame people who give up memberships. <laughs> Last, uh, call here on the season pass membership, uh, questions that you guys have be sure to leave those in the comments below um and again make sure too if you do want to interact with us you have a question make sure that you register streamyard.com facebook that will give streamyard access to displaying your name and picture in the comments so what else do we want to talk about here I mean, we can talk about some of the exciting things we've seen in the app lately. We have seen some improvements. We have. I've, one of the big ones I'm sure everyone's excited about who's got picture passes. You should, at least I'm speaking on behalf of the Apple crowd out there, that you can view your photos in the app now, which for the longest time, that thing would just error, well, not error, I would just shut down on you. Um, but now we can at least see our photographs that we had taken at the park. Another Apple thing was they have the, uh, you can add your membership now to Apple Wallet, so you don't even need to open up the app to get to your pass or your membership. You just hit your wallet and uh, scan mm -hmm. your way through the park. To me, that's yeah. really helpful because we share our devices on one Apple ID. So it just makes it nice to have everything in one place on all of our phones. Um, they have it for Android too. We were looking at it on Saturday and we noticed that the, the barcode on the Android is way bigger than your barcode on your Apple phone. Well, be that way, Android people. Uh, size doesn't matter. Uh, one thing that uh, I've heard is, that, at least in Disney World, you can load your pass onto your Apple Wallet and then bounce it over to the Apple Watch. I did not confirm that myself. However, I did fight with this on the Six Flags app. I was not able to get it over to the Apple Watch, and I was really hopeful for that. That would have been neat. Oh, I was just going to try it to see if it would work, but I don't feel like messing with it. You may have better luck than me. <laughs> no, I'm thinking the only way to possibly do it on the watch is actually have a screenshot of it, an image, and pull that image up on the watch. That would feel and so I've magic band to me. I love magic bands. <laughs> Got mine right here. I'll tell you what, after being at you know Disney for, for 10 days, it is so nice to just tap and go and not have to actually worry about pulling the phone out to... Yeah scan anything it, it keeps you're more into the i have that exact same magic band um you know you're more into the vacation the experience you're not on your phone granted if you're part of you know the whole lightning lane lightning lane plus you're having to jump on the phone to make reservations but um or mobile that's quartering. a good segue in what we've seen for single ride skip the or yeah single ride flash passes at some of the other parks. Yes, yes. Yeah, that is a current disaster. I, I have the premium flash pass. I have used it on the app, but if I have to go get that watch, that's a nightmare. And then getting your skip the lines, having the Diamond Elite VIP, was it was really a, a trade-off. You'd show up to the park early, one person, me, you know, I spent the is standing in line waiting for the skip the lines while the rest of my party got on the four rides that I got skip the lines for. Well, what we've seen in Florida and California, or Florida, sorry, Texas and California, about the same thing. Um, 
we've seen that there is a QR code similar to the one day flash passes at our park at a couple of their most popular rides where depending on the day, it's dynamic pricing. I think I've been told it's $7.95 to $12.95 per ride per rider. And you just do do it on your phone and QR code. And I'm thinking if they can do it that way, then maybe we'll have we'll have some skip the lines that way. Um, but they've also noticed that some of those rides that are um, that have the one ride skip the line option are not always on Flash Pass. So if you think of, you know, maybe Goliath and Max, if they were R2, if we were just to, we were just to think about what, you know, obviously Max, Max Force, if they can sell twelve ninety five a ride for it, they probably would. Um, but then it disappears off of Flash Pass in some cases. Yeah, and there's just something about being at Disney, knowing I bought the plane tickets, knowing I paid 100 bucks to get in just that day, where I get real flip about that extra 15 bucks to get on that ride and save myself an hour. Um, that I don't, I just don't see myself breaking at any price with a regional amusement park where I can just go back another day. Well, I think we're local. Like, I think if I were visiting another park, say I went back out okay. to New Jersey and there was, there was, yep, I'd pay up. They weren't able, I don't know the name of it. There was one part of the park with the major coaster that wasn't open during a holiday in the park. My kids would do that one if it wasn't available just to know and to get it if we didn't have our own skip the lines. Um, I think that's actually something that is more flexible for families. I'm not going to spend $175 a day for a platinum flash pass. If there's only one or two rides that everyone wants to ride, then that's much more economical. But I think it proves that Six Flags will take your money. <laughs> they will always take your money. <laughs> hey, it's Disney's the same way these days. They're, you know, adding the that lightning name plus to you know, you've already paid $15 a day per person to use the old version of FastPass. Now you're dishing out another anywhere between $11 and $15 to skip a ride that's not included in Lightning Lane. So That's when I spend my whole day at Country Bear Jamboree and Hall of Presidents. Because <laughs> it's the only thing I can get at. <laughs> Laura, Laura saw the Country Bear Jamboree for the first time in her in her life. I'm sorry, Laura. <laughs> I personally prefer the well. I prefer the tiki room over Country Bear. <laughs> or give me the good old Carousel of Progress. That one I'm saying all day. Uh, yeah, absolutely, that one I'll do all day. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> talk. Yes, this this is not. Uh, we are not the Disney World. Yes, ba yeah. Magic Band. Some kind of um, or for the water park, it would be great. I know the. Uh, what do they call them at Universal Water Water Parks? They have um, bands. It would be very cool. I don't know. Universal is that dark place you don't go to. <laughs> I just don't go to Florida. Um, Does anyone not switch gears here? But Caitlin's one. No, do we know what? What's the web? The website to uh, to renew the IBES. I did post it the, a couple days ago and put it as an announcement on the top. Oh, awesome. So it should be on there. That's when everybody was freaking out. I was just trying to let people know that it expires, so just kind of look and make sure that you have it going. Thank you, Kim. So hopefully that will help people. But I can bring it up back up to the top again. So we could play a little like if you could see if, if you could if you could see one big improvement in the park or an event or just something coming to our park that other than a roller coaster which we know wouldn't happen this year because there's no time but something great what would be something positive 
that you'd like to see come to the park? And we can see that in the chat and pull some of these up. Yeah, and maybe for all of you who are in here, what's something you'd really like to see come to the park for 2022? Different food options. And pizza that's not paper thin. I will say Capone's kept their good pizza, even when it got pretty bad. When my, I mean, I have a very small 10-year-old boy, and he got that piece of pizza, and he's like, I need to use another meal. Because it wasn't enough, but we just started walking to Capone's because they still had the good pizza. But yeah, some more yeah. food options that would be nice. Yeah, I definitely agree with the food options. I mean, do we really need multiple pizza locations around the park? I mean, one or two, great. Um, we, I don't think we need three. I mean, let's swap that out, get something different in there. What else would everyone like to see? I'm going to look in the chat as well. Taste the Flags Festival. I would love to see that come back, Rebecca. I'm with you. Yeah, there's some some good food options that were there and some uh, good beer as well. And you know what? For anyone who might listen, <laughs> throw it out there. Like all of us with the dining pass who normally will come and eat like the cheap food. We had those dining passes, and I, I think we and my family probably ended up buying three or four of the punch cards. I mean, we spent money when we normally wouldn't spend money because it was really fun to just try the small plates, and especially having a festival that's two weeks long. Better quality, yeah. Anyone else on this? Why do we need two Johnny Rockets? Telling you to turn one into a character dining location. We need fun more fact. shows going on around the park. Yes. Fun fact, one of the current Johnny, I believe, the Johnny Rockets in Orleans at one point was character dining. They did test that out like a long, long, this would have been... Probably I've seen evidence of it like early 90s, maybe. But yeah, character dining would be so amazing. Nice little, you know, since they want to upcharge everything, that'd be a nice upcharge. And we had character dining at our picnic, and that was really fun. We did. That was awesome. Speaking of which, someone did ask, uh, what is the odds of having another picnic this year? Let's just say that there are, I've begun discussions <laughs> on it. With the park or with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. We'll just, just say that. The black card again, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just break out, you know, the black card, throw it all down on there. And, you know, we'll just rent the park for the day. We're yeah, the park really more festivals. That. They're um, the fun. Park. Sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. I'm just, what else? What other, what other things do we want to see? Somebody brought up about the cash thing coming back or like trying to do cash. I don't think they're going to go to that. Yeah, there it is. No, I don't think, I don't think cash is ever coming back. It's more safety for their employees, I believe. And plus on their end, they probably lost a good, you know, you don't know what Im people are doing with the money. So that it's probably saved them a lot of money in the long run. But it's also a quicker transaction too. Yeah. You're not having to, you know, dig through your wallet, count out money, and then hand that to the cashier, and then the cashier brings that in and then has the count changed back to you. It's much quicker just to swipe the card. Having cash is pretty labor intensive. I mean, you may not have seen, but they they used to have to send these teams all throughout the park unescorted. You were not meant to notice them um, to pick up big bills routinely just to you know for safety reasons and then it all has to get like counted in it, it was it's very labor intensive and safety intensive for the park yeah i think with all the stuff that they had brought up with you have people having all those fights and all that kind of stuff not trying to bring that up but i mean you have them breaking into those places 
you know, so I mean, that yeah. is some, some of it's more like when I worked there, I don't think that we had like a lot of that going on, but it, there was a lot it, internally. That's that's a lot of temptation for somebody, especially in their first job. It, it's just tough and people don't always make the best choices um, just because they haven't run into that before. But I, I think, I mean, as somebody who uses Apple Pay for so much doesn't really bother me not to have it especially in the water park i liked not having to worry about breaking cash yeah yeah i'd go with kurt here in terms of bringing back you know let's work continue the work on the landscaping i know that you know we kind of they were making some improvements last year let's just keep that up keep it going absolutely and bring some i mean if there's at all a way to bring some more shade and greenery. This our park. If you never, if you didn't attend the park back in the '80s or '90s, you don't know how many more trees there were, and how many more shaded areas there were. It would be really nice to see. Oh, like we used to have a trellis, like St. Louis does, that you can walk through over in County Fair. It to me, it's just a fresher, um, more pleasant experience when we have plants in the shade. Well, we can always just go to St. Louis and take theirs. I don't think they have two. Missing. They have two. Let's take. <laughs> we can take one. Brent, let's load up truck. Let's go. We're going. They won't notice. They to They'll never notice. They. It's fine. They could just borrow to us for a few seasons. We'll maybe give it back. Um, Jim's oh. looking for some paint on the water slides. Yeah. Those water. They're not going to make you slide rough. down any faster, Jim. <laughs> they are looking rough um i mean and it's it's because they sit out in the weather and they get a lot of sunlight right there and they they could use a, a cleanup now here's one i can agree with too the picks on all the coasters yeah oh. well at least fix the ones you got right right it's I a mean, real hard sell on that picture pass when you can't get pictures on the picture pass. Yeah. I mean, even if they went all digital on the pic picture pass, I would completely understand that. Um, at least, but it, there really isn't a point right now. <laughs> Can right. anyone name all of our current rides that once had picture passes, once had pictures? Does Batman used to have pictures? I don't know if Batman did. Did it? No, I know. Dark Knight. Does it still have it? Dark and Dark. Dark Knight, Knight does. Okay. Dark Knight still does. Rocket Rockets used to have it. At yeah. Aww. Eagle. Amer the Eagle used to have it. Viper. Viper had it. See. <laughs> so he's yelling. I told you. Loggers run. Logan's Run still has it. Yeah, they still have it. Okay. Did Yankee ever have it? Which one? Yankee? Yankee oh. Clever? I don't think it's, it's never yet. been open as often. Let's see. We said Viper, Yankee, Eagle. I swear Batman used to back when it first opened. I could be wrong, though. I'm trying to think. I'm just visualizing where the. No, Batman never had it. No. There, there was no be a Batman place never had photos. It. And we never. We were told we were getting a Max Force launch picture. We never got it. I don't know if I'd really want my launch photo on Max. I mean, your whole face is gonna be like you know pushed back and everything. It's not gonna be the most appealing. Uh, Photograph. I'd finally be skinny. <laughs> <laughs> we should totally do like a Six Flags trivia night. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, it would. Look at oh, this great yeah, adventure that oh. I mean, has video recording cameras. Coaster effects. Oh, yeah. The coaster effects would be nice to have those back. Oh, loose article. So somebody said no cell phones on rides. We are hearing 
that there are various loose article policies being tried out at some of the other parks. And one of them actually I like, I, I think it was Magic Mountain. They're, they've started installing pouches on the rides, Third has it. which I think is really smart. So you put your cell phone in the pouch and you don't have to worry about, I mean, you don't have any of your other things, but you at least can carry your phone. And then those little loose articles can go in the pouch. And then we don't have a whole bunch of people panicking and going into ride areas because they lost their phones. Yeah, I'm very much in support of that. It just, it doesn't make sense to me that I can ride Big Thunder Mountain at Disney World with all of my possessions in the pouch, but I can't ride Justice League possessions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do think it's kind of a, pain with the drink bottles if they were to say you had to do lockers but there are some parks that are bringing back the um more parks bringing back the locker required policies for doesn't dark night have pouches oh i haven't been on it i didn't go on it this season so he's yelling at me yes okay yeah it does but i think it slows down that ride because that's a continuous ride and so you have people trying to zip it up and then unzip it but yeah they do have it I mean, I think the, the biggest thing we can stress to everyone is we're thinking toward, I mean, we have some time, is we could be seeing a lot of changes and a lot of things that are a little, a little more inconsistent as things get tried out and then adjusted. Um, because that, that's just what we're observing. We have, we have the benefit of being one of the last parks to open. So we get to see things, changes happen at other parks first and i know a lot of us uh work in the other groups we now have our texas junkies group <laughs> um and some of us will be visiting before our park opens some other parks but we we're in for an adventure this year <laughs> rita said she brings her backpack on justice league all the time they do not mind. Like I wear a crossbody bag and I've asked and they don't mind it. It doesn't interfere with the restraint. But even if it was between your feet, what would it? Yeah, where's it going to go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm often challenged by, I have a fanny pack that I wear. It's I know I'm all um, it's not very three dimensional, but I've been told many a time to take it off and leave it. And it's, it's really not much. I also have cargo shorts and I just throw my phone in there. But the, what do they call it? Belt. So they, a fanny pack is not allowed, but a, what do they call Like a money belt is, which is flat. So I'm just like, it's a money belt. Okay, I'm, I'm still blown away every time I go to uh, Disney Hollywood Studios. You get on Rock and Roller Coaster and you bring in your bag with you, putting it on the floor, and that coaster is going upside down. <laughs> Physics. I just always put my foot through uh, one of the backpack straps just in case. You know, I'd really like to see that. Um that area, that stage in Southwest get used again. That is such a gorgeous area in the park with the little stage right next to Chubasco. And now that they don't run the haunted house there, I would love to see some life brought back to that area. Wasn't it that spring show that they had for a couple of one season with the Cowboys? Well, they used to run, I don't think they ran it, like they used to have run some shows like in the square area. So they almost had almost a, like a gallows there. They had mariachis there when it first opened. Oh, I get, you're talking about like inside that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right now they just Not have that a outside table. little stage that's uh like a, what do you call that thing? Like a Oh, 
again, if you would like to interact with us, um, make sure that you are registering with StreamYard.com slash Facebook. I'm starting to see a lot of comments come through from Facebook user. We don't know who you are, and if we don't know who you are, we're not going to be able to answer your questions. Gary, I agree. I think Universal, from what I've seen of Universal, I've not been, but as I've watched videos at Universal, they do have, you check in and it's a locker that you just get for the time of the wait time. It's hard to argue about having to get a locker when it's just provided. I'm going to make one of the quiet ones in here. Speak up. Laura, what would you like to see changed at the park? You've been pretty quiet here. Um, or, at, or added. Or food added. or. I would say clothing options. I definitely need more Six Flags clothing. Oh, and you meant for for us to buy, not the clothing option that people were wearing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I meant. And I'm sure any sweatshirts, long sleeves, you want thumb holes too, correct? I would love thumb holes. Oh. Those are would be extremely nice during... Fright Fest, if it's cold, holiday in the park. Thumb holes are my life. Last call fall. Let's give all the hints of all the. <laughs> yes. Mardi Gras. Yes, I am. Thumb holes are everything for me. I'm cold 24 7. So yeah. if it's got thumb holes, I love it. Gary's right there with merchandise, merchandise, and merchandise. So the company that released those little flat coaster uh, items, they also now have released a skyline for Six Flags Great America. Did I see that? Yes, the Parkscapes. I'm hoping to wait out till it's we're in the park and I could use my discount. Yeah. Oh, did you I'm already buy it, Bob? I guess he did. Of course he did. I know it's a little blurry, I, but, you know. I think we need to see some more pop-up shows happen during the days and stuff. And these are very easy to put together. It is literally four pieces of metal that you're just snapping into a base. So it doesn't get any easier than that right out of the box. I'll be laying on the floor a bloody mess anyway. Oh. Merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Seeing what all right for the question in terms of special, are we planning on doing special Olympics? Of we would love to help out with special Olympics again. Um, we do not have any dates on the calendar yet, so we do not know when it will happen. But yes, absolutely, we love helping out special Olympics. At History one point, repeating itself, it's always the first Saturday of Fright Fest. So whenever we get the dates for that, you would know generally what date it would happen on. At one point, I think we were even, as as the labor issue was happening, we were even in talks to volunteer to work and donate our <laughs> wages to Special Olympics. It is something that I know our group um, is passionate about. Yeah, we almost were working. We were almost working a food stand last year, and we would do it. We would totally do it with enough notice. We'd do it for a day. Nobody wants anything on cooking. <laughs> I mean, Rich said the pop-up shows. I remember too. There used to be a little cute show back in the kitty area over by Eagle. I remember sitting down and watching that with Joshua. Yeah, they had like a game, a kids family game show over there at one point. Hmm. Yeah, if you are, that's another fun fact. If you can look at all the performance spaces that are built in the park um, and those that you don't notice, there are so many little stages. The gazebos could all, there's, you know, the gazebos were once used for, for shows. We've got the we stage by the that would come around and do what was it, Spirits of America? Yeah. 
Block party. Yeah, there's a lot of performance space. I'm very hopeful. I mean, I've, I've heard that that's not... I'm hopeful that things that I've heard, I'm trying to keep an open mind, the things that, that I've heard about the CEO and his feeling towards entertainment versus thrills are not not true. Um, I'm hoping that they, there's still a balance between the entertainment and the thrills, because to me, that's what makes it uh, a, more than just like a permanent carnival. Right. And along that topic, I agree with Mike Burke, and I'm sure Brent does too on this topic. Bring the food truck. <laughs> <laughs> for more than just that one thing. Yes, for more than just that one. And I will say, none of us got to do the, the jerk ch chicken, and I cannot remember. We have a poster who was looking all year for that jerk chicken. We want the jerk chicken um, it was delicious at Taste of Six Flags, and I would love to have it all year. And we none of us got to try the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. No, I, I wanted to try that, but the um, kicking chicken that had it never actually opened. I would like to see some of those empty buildings either have a new facade so I don't notice that they're empty buildings as some <laughs> have happened, or finding a, a purpose for them. Hey, I'm all for a, another Starbucks stand, a Starbucks <laughs> stand on the opposite end of the park because, you know, you have to walk all the way back to Orleans to get that ice caramel macchiato, you know, when you're back by. That's a big park. Life. I think it needs two Starbucks. Yeah, I almost wasted does. all the calories I got from the drink getting back to get a refill. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, Bob. Show off your Starbucks cup. Oh, this one from. Yeah, but show uh, it. Not only is it Starbucks, it's Stitch, and it's it has Stitch. his name on it. Aww. Like everything all in one. So, yeah. And that's from Danielle. It was a late birthday present. So, thank you, Danielle, if you are uh, watching, and Chris and the mini ringmaster Mora. Um, we have seen some co-brandings and like more like we get we have Starbucks and Johnny Rockets. Take it for what it is. But some Auntie Ann's showed up. Is that Texas that got the Auntie Ann's? Got the pretzel stands. So maybe hmm. we'll see some of those. I know we would never see it in our park because it is a Disney thing, but Joffrey's. A Joffrey's coffee stand would be amazing. To compete with your Starbucks? Yes. And, I, and I'm and i going to go out there and I'm going to say this, that I will take Joffrey's over Starbucks any day. Wow. I'll take Dole Whip. Yeah. And it was, I swear we had Dole Whip for like a weekend and I didn't get out there that weekend. So I don't actually believe that we ever had it because I didn't I will, get any. <laughs> I will gladly take Dole Whip at the park. Right, and it could just be the dull whip. It doesn't have to be the dull whip float. I'm just bring on the uh, the whip. See, I've got another fellow fan <laughs> out there that loves Joffrey. So if you've been to Disney, you know what I'm talking about. And especially their donuts are amazing. They're like the size of your face. Well, I don't need a donut that big. It's delicious. That would be really cool to. I mean, I'm I'm just back to thinking of character dining that would be so nice to like reserve a cup one of two seatings and have a little show in characters yeah they could even you know if they don't even want to dedicate a space to it use the uh picnic room room. on, on yeah. off weekends or days when there's no events planned back there and they got the snowshoe i i think the snowshoe saloon needs to be used more it's such a, it's such a, it's one of the original stages. It'd be so nice to see it used more. Do you think we're going to get Aunt Martha's to stay? Oh. I would hope so. What if, okay. What? Oh, uh oh, here we go. 
Uh-oh. Food truck or Aunt Martha's? You have to pick one. Oh, one, one Aunt has Martha's. Aunt Martha's. Food truck with jerk chicken. How do you do that to me? And quesadillas. Now, or here's the thing. Quesadillas you can get over by bowl. So They're not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same as coming off that food truck. And they can that's where I actually it. met. That's where I met Brent at. It was <laughs> by the food truck. <laughs> Let's see in the chat. Food truck or Aunt Martha's? I wish we had the ability in here to like to just put a poll up, but I, I know <laughs> we don't have that functionality. But we let's see. We've got, group. We have one. We have Aunt Martha's all the way. So, <laughs> yeah, one for Aunt Martha's. My below. We'll do the, a poll uh, in the group, and we'll here. do some of these uh, fun ones. Right. How about Martha we'll, starts working the food truck? Are you going to work at the food truck? No, I want Aunt Martha's out of the food truck. Oh, he wants Aunt Martha. That's oh. another possibility for Aunt Martha's. <laughs> oh. James says he wants food truck. Aunt Martha's food truck. <laughs> yeah, what's your what's Aunt Martha's? We got. No, know, let's not put the food poor Genevieve in the little tiny little food truck. She needs room. Now, here's, here's how my vote. Would depend on what was the food truck serving because I said jerk. jerk chicken and the quesadillas. If it, mm, I'd, I'd have to go with the quesadillas out of the food truck over Aunt Martha's. And they could make a jerk chicken quesadilla and it would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what about gyros? I don't know. I'm allergic to lamb. I don't think out of the food truck, but we definitely use a stand that has them or one of those. Yeah, that's a missed uh, opportunity, not having uh, euros. Because I know Great Adventure has, still has them. Now, what I'm actually shocked that we do not have, because we are so close to the wonderful state of Wisconsin, is actually a stand that has like cheese brats. curds. Brats, <laughs> cheese curds. <laughs> Or like mozzarella sticks. The large ones that they have up by you, Jamie? The what? Do you want them as large as the ones that are up by you? As long as they're deep fried, yes, sir. Oh, I don't crazy like the buffalo saloon, bringing that back. I remember once they had a, um, a food truck in the park. It was not part of your dining class plan. You had to pay for it, but they had deep fried cauliflower bites. Oh my God, it was to die for. Was that when we were in St. Louis, maybe? No, St. Oh. Louis, that had a really good food truck, but this was because I remember getting them during Fright Fest a lot. And when I would, before the Diamond Elite line, I would get my deep fried cauliflower bites and stand in line for the kids so they could have good seating in the show. So how about a food truck festival in the park? Yes. I'm all for it. Just yes. park them all over. Park them all over. Town Square and then park them all over throughout the park too. Or even a rotating visiting food truck. One, one week it's tacos. One week it's euros. One week custom cupcakes. Would you cheat on your food truck <laughs> with other food trucks? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are talking to the guy who owns a hat that has the food truck on it. <laughs> um, the sub one, was that open a lot to, this year? The um, Big Louis? Oh, the Italian beef one was not. I think in August it had its, it was open pretty much the month of August. I don't remember if it was open during Fright Fest or not. No. I'm wondering if it was hard, if that one was hard to source. I just remember walking past there and not really seeing too it much for that. Definitely, really didn't open much until August, and then it definitely oh. wasn't open at all for Holiday in the Park. But I don't even recall it being open for Fright Fest. I don't think it was. Not to change the topic, but somebody just put on their garbage cans. Not enough garbage cans. They actually did a survey. I saw, I read somewhere with the garbage cans at Disney. Um, Walt actually ate a hot dog 
And when he got done with the hot dog, that's where he wanted a garbage can. Then they had another one, and that's where they had another garbage can. Had another one. So that's how they measured out the garbage cans when they have it at Walt Disney. Oh, that was kind what, of interesting. <laughs> yeah, what I think what Sean's getting at here, it's uh, if you've ever been to any festival at Epcot, um, it's known as garbage can dining because most people find the nearest garbage can and they set up shop and that's where you are having your meal right on top of that garbage can. But see that Disney theory wouldn't work for me who would nibble on it and make it last longer <laughs> or your husband would have it gone before so it would be like Epcot <laughs> and have a million garbage cans where I wouldn't need as many garbage cans. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey Jamie, do you want to talk about our meetup? Uh, yeah, we're having a meetup at the end of February. Uh, Bernie Mills down by the uh, ice skate rink. Um, I can't think of the store. There's, I think it's Florida City Value. We were just there this weekend to check it out and make sure that there was still seating there. There's a stage we will not be using. There will not be a presentation. Speak for yourself. Uh, well, Brett will dance for you. Um but yeah, it's just kind of just meet up and meet other junkies. Give it a chance to, you know, it's, when you're in the park, it's so hard to walk through and be like, oh, I think I recognize that person. I think they're a junkie. And we did do one two years ago. And I do still have some really great friendships that I've met through that day. Uh, I did notice this weekend that they no longer have the ride animals. So we will not be renting one for everyone to take a ride. But there was one member who said if you wanted to bring your kids by after the inflatable thing, she could give discounts. Nice. I was going to say, if we're going out there, and I know the mall is, they are hosting us. They are, they are, they know we're coming, and they've been gracious to, to be happy to have us have a meetup in their space. Make sure you uh, shop at the store. Spend a little money there. There is a new store in there that is like Kurt turned me on to it. It's called Second and Charles. When you first look glance, it looks like a bookstore, but you go in, it goes so deep, and there's like old record vinyls, there's books, there's video games, there's oh, there's so much. I could spend hours Fun. in that store. And there's also their Disney store is a Disney outlet for Disneyland. So you can get I don't Disneyland. Think I, I did not Disney, see that. The store. I don't think it's there. The store's anymore. gone. Oh, the no. Disney store has when did been that taken happen? out. So that's how long I've been to, since I've been to a mall. Yeah, it's when when Disney went through and they closed up all the uh, retail locations. Oh, that's uh, that was an outlet. But there is the box lunch store. That doesn't count. It's not the same. Which has some Disney stuff, and if you know you're a uh, you know, Disney bound. You've got your lounge flies that they have in there. I just like to buy the parks merchandise here. <laughs> Bummer. That box lunch was a nice store. I need a second job just for that. Now, here's something that would we're not going to be able to do it this year. I know it's too late, and but I had a thought for down the road is doing a live broadcast of our junkie stream from Gurney Mills. Oh. We'd but have that to talk to our friend there. <laughs> we'd have to talk to our friend there. We'd have to get basically, you know, hardwired internet because their, wi their Wi-Fi part in the uh, mall is not that good. Or if one of us had a hotspot. Mm, probably not enough to put, you know, multiple multiple uh, people on, but there's something to think about down the road. Taking this live stream and doing it live from somewhere. We'll just crowd around you. Yeah, you can. Say we do another one opening day of the water park. That one was fun. Go live from Hurricane Harbor. There we go. Oh, yeah. I tried it that one live feed at Christmas. Yeah. And the freezing cold sitting in the clubhouse <laughs> with someone who remained nameless. <laughs> looking for see if we have any more questions. Yeah, I'm looking to. Or a live do a, we could do a live from the picnic. Oh, somebody's asking, but it already does. 
the most, I think the only thing that came down to at the end is if you wanted the granny nachos, there was no way to say no sour cream. Is, is that, but for, if you put in your meal, there's a customize button and you can tap off ingredients. For most items, there was, yeah, yeah JB's, you could, first you couldn't take off the cheese and the sour cream, but then we got it changed so that you could at least take off the cheese, but not the sour cream. Yeah. Um, and then there was like one burger joint where you can remove the cheese on the cheeseburger, but on another burger joint, you can't remove the cheese on the cheeseburger. So it's kind of iffy there. Well, I think Laura found they removed the chicken from the sandwich at Strutter's. Oh, <laughs> yes. Because that's exactly what I wanted. Let's just put Martha's back in Strutter's. Then you can have your food truck in food truck festival in the picnic grove. Yeah, I think everyone like poor strutters. Everyone's like, yeah. oh, Sky Truck Tower. Well, we were told that, back? we were told it was going to come back. But I mm -hmm. I kind of quipped earlier about the member lounge, and of course I hate dealing in all rumors, so. I just don't see if if memberships are no longer a thing. I don't know that they would really be reopening that. Yeah, and well, that's one thing that's not in. It's not in, listed in our benefits. It was something they added as a perk, and I think it was really labor intensive for them because they'd have to have somebody at the door. Yeah. Um, someone, someone staffing those freestyle machines that I would empty every visit. Yeah. And I don't think our members treated it very nicely. I remember going in there so much and it just being trashed beyond all belief. Yeah. That's why we can't have nice things. What do we think about crowds? Well, honestly, that remains like, to be seen. I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we'll see a difference, a huge difference this year. Because people are keeping their memberships. Like if you're keeping your membership, you're locked in, you have your, there's no incentive to change over and you have your, and I want to be careful because I stick my foot in my mouth and make bad things happen. So I don't want to make anything bad happen for anyone. <laughs> um, people are on their final year of their upgrade they're not going to change anything about their membership there's no like big sale to come over and try if if we were to get the other kinds of memberships there's no reason to try that there's no reason for somebody who's enjoying an upgrade to go to a pay in full for a lower membership where they are essentially paying more so i don't know that we're going to see I don't think we'll see the changes until, and then also how many people already bought their season passes. And I don't think it's going to change like 2022. If you have already bought your meal plan, you're locked in. So these 10 yeah. meals or four meals a park aren't going to matter until 2023. Now we see a price increase or two go through where people drop their membership. Let's see if there's Laura. She's <laughs> But I mean, and if we see, and I, they can't even really black out dates for Fright Fest because they put in writing they weren't going, not for like a season pass, right? They put in writing they couldn't, or they wouldn't. Am I remembering correctly? Well, yes. And and so much is weather dependent as well. If grocery prices keep going up, we'll have more members at the park eating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more questions for us? We've been at this for for about an hour and 15 minutes now. So, Oh, there was one on there. I mean, what happened in the 50% off for tickets? I do it's not showing as a benefit. I, I mean, I'm sure that's phased out. So, but it's not showing a benefit for people who are buying memberships now. However, 
there's a rat wide range of what that looks like depending on what your home park is. So somebody with the Magic Mountain Pass did confirm that they do still have the 50% off. The 50% off buying merchandise and food, but not 50% off to bring a friend. No, it was on, it's on there. Okay. So for the parks that are open, it's on there. A really interesting one. This is an interesting. I want, so just this week, Six Flags America went to the three tiered pass. So they had gone to the, you, only, you can only buy the membership full out. And then they just all of a sudden switched to the three tier pass this week. Their pass, like their basic one, instead of only being good at Six Flags America, they actually gave it a region. So it's, it's interesting, these different iterations. So Six Flags America that said it's valid at the following Northeast parks. And I believe it's good at um, any of those, the, the, any of the parks in the Northeast instead of just being good at Six Flags America. So thinking, you know, if we were to ever see things come to us, I wonder if they would make it, you know, any of the Midwest parks. And I mean, what is that, two? Two. <laughs> bundles us and St. Louis and the two hurricane harbors. It was interesting. And I feel like this would be the year to use up our points because who knows what would happen to them. Yes. And we for sure do not. It, it is going to be tricky. You're going to tricky to get a bring a friend for free. Pretty much if you have a golden ticket, you have, that's it. Um, don't expect those. Those aren't being advertised. Um, employees make good friends with employees for their comps. And you can't use your points on free tickets for friends currently. And I don't know that they're coming back. They just made a, they released a big video about points redemption and bring a friend for free was not on it. Cabana life for me this summer. <laughs> And, no, yep, point, like, the points per program is, um, somebody said they, they didn't have enough for Cabana. The points program isn't going away. They just expanded it, but they don't have, you can't get admission. You can just pretty much get food vouchers and games and things like that. Yeah, you used to be able to spend 5000 and get a bring a friend free on a weekday and 10000 to bring a friend free on a weekend. That's what's gone. Yeah. I used to use that a lot for Fright Fest. Yeah. And maybe we'll see them come back at a higher point value because they were really, that was one of the best values on there, like a weekday ticket for 5000 points. It's not hard to get 5000 points. That's a lot of ride check-ins. Well, and then if you're Diamond Elite VIP, you get your thousand every month anyway. So yeah, that gave you two friends and change. Some oh, they're hiring yet. If you're looking for a job, don't they have the walk-in job fair this weekend? Yeah, I think it's coming up. Yeah, and they did. Yeah. I mean, part of, we all can feel a little if if they raise a price here or there, we know that they also are raising wages for the employees. Yes. So they did, they are seeing some raises that are a little bigger than what they're expect they normally get. So we know that the people that serve us and make our time so great when we're in the park are getting some perks as well. All right, so why don't we go ahead and wrap this up. Anything else from the crew here? Uh, just real quick comment. I just went to sixflags.com slash great America slash jobs, and they have 2022 hiring events, February 19th, March 5th, March 19th, and April 2nd. Oh. Will be held at Six Flags Great America from 11 to 6. 300 positions to be filled. It's nice when you go to those because you get interviewed on the spot. You can get everything taken care of, get your training scheduled, you know, right there, what position you're going to take and when your training is going to be. Highly recommend. We'll come say hi if we know you work there. Yeah. Just don't speak on behalf of the park. We don't want you to get in trouble. 
Yeah, it's the worst thing an employee can do is actually speak on behalf of the park unless you are from the communications department. You really don't have the right to speak on authority of the park. So just kind of watch yourself. We don't want you getting in trouble with your boss, HR, or anybody else that might uh, come at you for you speaking when you should not be. Oh, will the next live stream be opening day preview? It will either be opening day preview or if something happens that is big enough news for us to cover, if we see changes, anything else new. Or if a media day happens to. Oh, that would be fun. If we send Bob and Laura down water slides at 35 degrees. <laughs> we just I want do to do it. today because we miss all of you. Yeah, it's been it's been a while, and you know we're hoping to see a lot of you at the Junkie Meetup in a couple of weeks at Gurney Mills. So we'll be out there. Not sure. I know Jamie will be there. I can't speak on for the rest of the team, but I'm going to try really there. hard. We have a my girls have a dance convention that weekend, but hopefully on the way back. All right. Well, it was great uh, talking and catching up with everyone, and we'll. You know, try to do do these a little more often, um, especially once the park is open. We actually have, you know, news to, to talk about. And also, if there's anything that you want us to do differently, or if there's something you want us to do more of, leave it in the comments, put it on our, you know, on the on Facebook, and we definitely will take your, your suggestions. So, you know, if you want more live streams or if you want us doing more content from the park itself when the park's open, just... Let us know what you want. We'll, you know, we'll try to do the best we can to provide that content for you guys because you it's the numbers that actually make this a group. I mean, the eight of us could just sit here and just talk to the flags all day, but you know, it's our members that this is why we're we're doing this and our love of the park. And feel free if you don't want to put it on the page, private message one of us. We really truly don't bite. Well, maybe Bob does, but um, <laughs> the rest of us were really nice. So feel free. Private message us. We love suggestions and we love getting to know our members. All right. Until next time, talk to you guys later. Have a great night. Bye. 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 Bye.